Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the Amiga 600 I repaired and restored in a couple of previous videos. If you want to see that, I'll put in a link in the description. As you can see, it's working perfectly fine. And what I'm going to do today is install some upgrades. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. What I want to do now is speak you through the upgrades I'm going to be installing in this Amiga 600. Now I've not gone too crazy with the upgrades. I would call this a, a standard upgrade for an Amiga 600. Um, so yeah, now the, the first thing I'm going to be putting in is Kickstart uh, 3.1. Um, now the reason for that is I'm going to be installing a compact flash, you can see it just here. Um, and you need uh, Kickstart 3.0 um, when you are using Classic Workbench. Anything above that is fine. Anything below that, uh, it works, but it's a little bit sketchy and it works best with uh, Kickstart 3.0 and up. So yeah, that's the first thing uh, I'm going to be installing. Now, I actually burnt this EEPROM myself. Um, now, you may be going, how come you did that? Why didn't you go out and buy a license for it? Um, I already own an Amiga 1200 that has Kickstart 3.1. Um, I actually own the license for that. And if you think I'm going out and paying for it again, um, that's not going to happen. You're tapped in the head. Sorry, I'm not paying for the same thing twice. Um, the second thing I'm going to be installing is this. This is a one meg trapdoor add-on uh, for the chip RAM. Um, the Amiga 600 has one meg uh, chip RAM already installed from stock. Uh, and this adds an extra one meg of uh, chip RAM, so that bring up to two meg chip. Uh, the next thing is an eight meg add-on card, uh, fast RAM add-on, so that will bring the total memory in this thing to ten meg. Obviously, the next thing um, is a compact flash. This has got Classic Workbench on it. It's got uh, it's rammed with WHD load games. Um, I pretty much uh, cloned my Amiga 1200 um, partitions when it came to the um, WHD load games. Um, it's got, obviously it's got the uh, Amiga 600 version for a classic workbench. Um, it's called the 68K classic workbench. And I've got a, a compact flash adapter so I can pop it in the hard drive slot. So yeah. They're the upgrades I'm going to be installing into this Amiga 600. Now, I'm not going to put them all in at once. Um, that would be stupid because if there's something wrong, um, <laughs> I've got to take them all back out again and then troubleshoot to find which one's the fault. So I'm going to put them in uh, one at a time and we can upgrade this Amiga 600. Now to get inside the Amiga 600, it's actually very easy. There are four screws we need to remove. The first one is here, there's one here, there's one here, and the final one is here. Remove those, flip it over, and then I'll show you how you can take the top lid off. That's the screws removed, and uh, let me show you how you get in the Amiga 600 now. The best way to do this uh, is pretend this is like a laptop. So you grab it like this here, and you start to open it. Now you need to be very careful to start off with uh, because if you see this here, this is your power floppy and disk indicator LED and it plugs into this connector here. So the first thing you need to do is lift it up a little bit and then pull this from this connector. Um, and then what you can do is you can just open it up like that. Uh, and that's you inside the Amiga 600. Now the first thing I want to install is Kickstart 3.1. So this Amiga came with Kickstart 2.05. So I'm going to remove this mask ROM and uh, install the EEPROM with Kickstart 3.1. And that's Kickstart 3.1 installed. Now you may be going that's a pretty large size EEPROM. Um, that's because this is a 27C800 
you're supposed to use a 27C400 uh, and the Amiga 600 because it's a 512 kilobyte mask ROM. Um, and this is a one meg EEPROM. Um, so all I had to do was just double up the kickstart ROM image. Uh, and obviously it's got a couple of extra pins because uh, the original is a 40 pin mask ROM. Uh, this is a 42 pin EEPROM, um, but it will fit in there. It, it does have the uh, socket to fit a 42 pin EEPROM in there. Um, but yeah, all I had to do was obviously double up the kickstart ROM image uh, and then I can use a 27C800 instead of a 400. So let's power on and it should take uh, a couple of extra seconds uh, to boot kickstart 3.1 because uh, I think 3.1 um, looks uh, a little bit longer for an hard disk and there we go it's booting I've just got the click from the drive I mean that's you always know when it's going to boot when you get that click and hopefully you can hear the tick yeah so that's uh, kickstart 3.1 installed what I've done is I've added the trapdoor memory add-on now this should add an extra 1 meg to the chip RAM uh, bringing it to a total of 2 meg chip so let's power on the system and wait for it to boot and I'll load Amiga test kit and we can test the one meg chop door add on there we go we're going to get a boot so we've got the clip from the drive this kickstart 3.1 let's pop in Amiga test kit And let my camera focus. Come on, focus. Come on, there you go. Let's go to F1. Use the mouse because obviously the keyboard's sticking up. So, and there we go. We got two meg chip. Hopefully you can see that there. Two meg chip was one meg. Now it's two meg. Uh, let's do a test. And I'll let this test run for a bit, guys. Just to you know, test out the the new trapdoor RAM. As you can see, I've let that go round uh, a few times, so that would indicate there's nothing wrong with the trapdoor RAM. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to install the 8 meg fast RAM. That's the 8 meg fast RAM added. You just clip it over the top uh, of the CPU and it adds 8 meg fast. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link uh, to where I got this from. Um, so let's power on the system and now I've got uh, Amiga test kit in the drive so it should boot it automatically and there we go hopefully you can hear that and there's Amiga test kit so let's go back to the memory option and there we go, we've got 2 meg chip and 8 meg fast. Hopefully you can see that. So again, I'm just going to do the same. I'm just going to let this go around testing the RAM and then I'll come back. As you can see, I've let that memory check go around a few times. I would say that's the 8 meg fast RAM card working great. What I want to do now is install the compact flash compact flash and adapter is installed let's power on and hopefully we get a boot to the 68k version of classic workbench and hopefully you can see the hard drive right doing something there you go you can see it look it's flickering away there Come on, boot to 68k version of Classic Workbench. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> Getting a tick from the drive, so I know it's booting. Yes, come on. Yeah, there we go. Winner, winner. So yeah, well, that's this Amiga upgraded. 
Now before I finally switch this Amiga 600 on uh, and reload again, um, I just want to come to a, a conclusion that I've made. I've decided to keep this uh, Amiga 600 for myself. Uh, the reason for that is I don't actually own a 600. I have a, an Amiga 500, I have a 1200, but I never owned an uh, Amiga 600, but now I do. So this is going into my collection. Um, also what I want to do uh, is go through how much this Amiga cost to get it into this state it is now. Um, so I've got a little bit of uh, a list to go through. Uh, now the Amiga 600 itself uh, cost £120. Um, now that's pretty cheap because obviously it was faulty, not working. Uh, the capacitors and all the parts um, that's the ceramic capacitor, the 5.5 timer, uh, the solder, the, the wire, uh, the cotton boards to clean up, the flux and all that type of stuff come to about £20. Uh, the 1 meg uh, trapdoor add-on, chip RAM add-on was £20. The 8 megabyte fast RAM add-on that clips over the top of the processor, that was £46. Uh, the 16 gigabyte compact flash card was 15 pounds and the compact flash to id adapter was nine pounds so that's a grand total of 230 pounds um, now you'll be lucky uh, if you pick up a, a a decent stock amiga 600 for that price uh, and as you can see for that price i got a nicely kitted out one uh, so yeah this amiga 600 uh, has come a long way uh, from when I first got it, you know, <laughs> when I first got this thing, there were capacitors literally falling off the board because of corrosion. Uh, and now look at it, it's uh, it's kicking ass. And we're all back together, so let's power on. Hopefully we get a boot. And we can see the hard drive light flashing away gone off but it will come back hopefully yeah there we go and we should get a boot into classic workbench hello <laughs> and there we go classic workbench now like I said guys this is set up exactly the same way as my Amiga 1200 um, so if you want to know how I set this up, go watch that video. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but as you can see, I've got classic workbench partition. I've got games number to K partition, games L to Z partition, demos partition, ADFs. This contains all Amiga floppy drive images and stuff like that. And then I've got an empty uh, other partition that I can put uh, whatever I want in there. Um, now let's uh, start a game now obviously this is a stock uh, 68,000 can to go into the games folder and then look for the game and everything like that on a uh, 68,000 can take a long time to do that so the best way to do it is right click go to run and ag launch um, and then you can load your games that way and it's a lot quicker than going through the actual um, disc so yeah there we go let's Go to C. I'm going to load a bit of chuck rock. So let's go down. And there it is, chuck rock. And it's as simple as that to load again. Ignore the stripes, guys. This is this TB. It does the same thing with my 1200 as well. It's this TV, it's, it's rubbish. But yeah, there you go. Loading a bit of chalk rock. Let's uh, wait for the uh, animations to come up and I can skip through it. And we get some of that awesome chalk rock music. Yep. Wait for it. winner <laughs> so yeah 
there you go guys fully upgraded uh, Amiga 600 I hope you liked the video if you do please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one <laughs> Gotta stop doing that. Catch you next time, guys.